A new proposal for a college football super league is leaving a lot of heads spinning. Is it too radical or is it inevitable? You are Locked On ACC, your daily podcast on the Atlantic Coast Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I mean, forget about conference realignment for a second. The whole thing might just get blown up completely. I'm Alex Dono from Locked On Canes. He's Kenton Gibbs from Locked On Wolfpack. So, you know, Kenton, I'm also a big soccer fan, and I can remember a few years ago a proposal which didn't pass, but it actually did lead to some bargaining and a, and a little bit of a reform for a European Super League in soccer. And I'm seeing this actually looks very similar, this college football Super League proposal. So maybe, Kenton, we've been wasting our time talking about conference realignment. We might just all, all end up in uh, two divisions at some point. Well, no, I strongly disagree in terms of we were wasting our time because that's like saying it was a waste of time to talk about the 12-team tournament, uh, the 12-team college football playoff tournament. It didn't last for long, but it still was here. We're seeing right. realignment. It still is here. But inevitably, we are moving towards a, a super, uh, super, a, lot, a super conference or super cluster with just football being the driving force. And I have said this multiple times on air. When I realized that certain teams who were basketball blue bloods were getting left behind in realignment, I said, "Oh, right. basketball does nothing for this." And then I started looking up the numbers in terms of the biggest basketball brands and football brands and, and how much revenue they bring in. I said, oh, yeah, this is, this is not close. Uh, so these these basketball brands will get left behind because football is driving this. And if it's not multiple sports, I could definitely see football branching out by itself and saying, hey, we're our own thing because cash rules everything around me. Cream, get the money. Dollar, dollar bills, y'all. And that's that's ultimately what we are headed towards. That's what we're climbing towards. But in the meantime, in between time, you and I are going to have fun arguing with Clemson and Florida State fans about whether or not they'll be going before June 30th. Oh, and we will be talking about Florida State on this episode because they they had two motions to dismiss denied in their uh, battle against the ACC. Now, it doesn't mean it's over, and it doesn't mean that Florida State has lost. Uh, they lost a battle today. They haven't lost the war. And we have to talk about the money that's going in on NC State uh, in this uh, in this Final Four they got Purdue on Saturday, tomorrow night, 6.09 p.m. But let me give you guys the details on what I would consider a bombshell report about this college football Super League proposal. Credit to The Athletic for putting this out there. Andrew Marchand and Stuart Mandel. Uh, and they've been working on this report for quite some time. And I, I've heard rumblings about you know different reforms that need to happen in college football. But I, I never knew it was going to come under this Super League proposal umbrella. So this group which is called College Sports Tomorrow, is trying to create a two-tiered structure among FBS schools. Quote, the current CST outline would create a system that would have the top 70 programs, all members of the five former major conferences, plus Notre Dame and new ACC member SMU, as permanent members, but this would encompass all 130-plus FBS universities. The perpetual members, which are the top 70, would be in seven, 10-team divisions, joined by an eighth division of teams that would be promoted from the second tier. Uh, they say while the CST model would eliminate the longtime conference structure for football, it would create one entity to negotiate with a prospective union that would represent the players on NIL, transfer portal, and salary structure rules. This embrace of collective bargaining could allow it to avoid the antitrust issues that have limited the NCAA's ability to enforce its own rules. And honestly, Kenton, that part of the Super League proposal, that's why this is attractive to, you know, the football power and brand programs and why it's attractive to a lot of university presidents. Because, you know, one of the potential results of all this, uh, all these NIL lawsuits and, and you know, potential for players to be ruled as employees, uh, eventually universities might be responsible for billions of dollars in back pay to current and 
former student athletes. So getting in front of it with a super league and a union would make a lot of sense. Now, uh, so and, and here the issue, Kent, when you bring up antitrust lawsuits with the way the NCAA operates, unfortunately, they're getting clobbered in antitrust cases now left and right. So with the Super League, you could avoid that. And I think that that that's why and, and there are obviously obstacles to this and we'll talk about them, why this is probably not going to happen, at least not yet. But the idea of cutting out the NCAA from football, not from the other sports, but cutting out the NCAA from football makes too much sense because the NCAA can no longer enforce their own rules. Yeah, and, and my the biggest argument for this is one that has I've I've said for years and now it's finally coming to light. You and I are professionals at this. Lee Corso, Fowler, Hurry, they're professionals. Um, you know. Doran, he's a professional. Cristobal, he's a professional. The trainers are professionals. The referees are professionals. Everybody is a professional except for the people who walk away with their bodies potentially mangled forever. This had to happen at some point in time. This was the inevitable outcome of this at some point. In time. I knew when the NCAA lost the first antitrust lawsuit. I said, yeah, we're headed towards something different. The NCAA yeah. is done for. They just don't realize it yet. They're not smart enough to say, hey, let's just go gently into the night because we're going to waste money. We're going to waste manpower. We're going to waste lawyer power trying to fight this as opposed to coming up with something better that works out more equitably for everybody, which is the path that the NTA has chosen. Let's make no bones about that. They have gotten their lawyers. They have dug in their heels. They have tried. And time after time, the court comes up behind them and yanks them by the heels and says, you're coming with me. You're going to lose this case. So, you know, that what you're talking about here in terms of collective bargaining, in terms of salary structure, NIL structure, what actually is and is not allowed in that negotiation between players and this CST entity, it sounds much more fair and equitable than what the NCAA had, where it's like, hey, I understand that, um, you know, these coaches are not coming to your coach. Pride didn't come sit on your mom's couch because he thinks you're a great student. That's not why he did it, Right. Tony Elliott is not coming to sit and talk to your dad and uncles and aunties and say, we're going to make your son a better man. When he leaves this program, he's going to be a better man. They're not saying that because they think that you're the best physicist to come out of the state of North Carolina in quite some time. They're doing that because you're big, you're strong, you can launch a ball, all that. So this was inevitably what we were going to see. And we may not be there yet, but this right. proposal, this proposal just speeds it up because they're, they're always – I want to say three to four stages of things like this. There's the whispers and the ideation stage, which Chip Kelly was a part of when he was saying football is going to be something separate eventually. We just aren't aware of it yet. And then there's the rough draft stage, which is what I think we're at now, where this proposal gets put forward. It's just a rough draft. And then you go to the third stage where, all right, we did a little time. All the kinks have been worked out from the rough draft. All of the, the logistics and legality work out. And we get towards the the um, storming stage. And then the last one is where it just becomes, this is who we are and who we've been for a while. And that's norming. So you got the ideation, rough draft, storming, and norming. And right now, we are firmly, firmly in the rough draft phase. Yeah, and this rough draft, it's going to be a sign of things to come. It just, the question will be when, right? And yeah. I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. It's in within no, the next no, no. several years. And the main obstacle here is, Right now, with the TV contracts, there's too much money being made under the current structure. And even if you can make a hypothetical argument that there's more money to be made with a Super League, uh, the TV networks, Fox, ESPN, especially who are the big power brokers here, are, are not just going to want to blow up the current system on a hypothetical of, hey, we could make more money. So I, I think that the current TV deals may have to run their course. In fact, ESPN and Fox ha have put pressure on conference leaders not to take meetings with the CST people. And they have successfully pressured uh, the SEC, Big Ten, and Big 12 to avoid these meetings. Now, supposedly, according to the athletic report, Kenton, 
the ACC actually did have some kind of a sit down, which may go to show you they're probably not as happy with their TV deal as uh, as the other conferences are. In fact, one of the uh, one of the university presidents who's a proponent of this is the president of Syracuse. Presidents from Syracuse and West Virginia uh, in the Big Twelve are two of the driving forces behind it. But the TV stuff is a huge obstacle because ESPN and Fox don't have incentive to blow up their current deals. And then another part of it, and, and huge credit to Andrew Marshand, who was one of the co-authors of this report. I was watching an interview with him and Andy Staples on On3, and he explained this very well. Conference leadership also does not have any incentive to promote this for obvious reasons, because if, you know, and, and obviously the, the big hitters here are Tony Petiti of the Big Ten and Greg Sankey of the SEC, and, you know, the other conference presidents don't carry as much weight, but they still carry weight. But they certainly don't have incentive to lobby for a Super League because if you get rid of conferences, you get rid of their jobs, right? Yeah. And not to mention, yeah. Kenton, you know, if you're you're the commissioner of the SEC and the Big Ten, not only are you thinking about you know heritage brands like Michigan and Ohio State, Alabama and LSU who who could benefit from a Super League, but the Vanderbilts and the Boston Colleges of the world and the and the Northwesterns of the world. This would like a super league if if the lesser brands are maybe subject to the promotion relegation and, and are not getting as big of a cut of revenue, then it doesn't really benefit them the way that it benefits the heritage brands. Oh, absolutely. I mean, there's there are pluses and minuses to this thing on a lot of sides, but my mother always told me one thing that I stick to and, and I know uh, very well to this day a bird in the hand is better than two in the bush. Yeah. And that is what uh, Sankey and Petiti are looking at. They've got a very big bird. They've got the golden goose in hand. Now, they're not going to let that go for a potential diamond goose, for a potential two diamond geese. They have what they want. So why would they relinquish that for the opportunity to give everybody what they want? Right. It kind of doesn't, you know, that, that part of it doesn't make sense. But that's why you and I have talked off air about this. What's the percentage or who has to approve this, which is something that we're still working to get to the bottom yeah. of. And that's something that on Locked on ACC, we're always going to tell you. If we got the information we got, if we don't, we don't. And at the moment, we don't know exactly how many need to approve this for this to get done. Because I do think that there are plenty of teams out here that if you really look at the conferences and you really look at everybody who's everywhere and say, how many of you teams as individuals are happy where you are and, and don't want anything um, to change? How many? I think that there are more than there are happy yeah. Um, who are disgruntled, who want something to change, who want something different, especially those group of five teams that are that would then see themselves in a literal eighth conference that they are now, you know, hey, I'm James Madison. I'm a perennial winner in the power of five. I'm App State. I'm a perennial winner in the group of five. I think that we could move ourselves up into that eighth, um, eighth division or group category and stay there as opposed to getting down with this American contract. Sign me up. Where I got to sign? Do I got to put a blood oath? Hand me the knife. We'll make it happen. So, you know, I, I think that there are, are many more teams who would like this than not. But the question is, who all needs to approve? Yeah, no, it's a great question. Coming up next, uh, Florida State, you could say they were handed an L in court today and a W for the ACC, but it's not over. And we'll talk about why when we come back. You want to keep it locked to locked on ACC. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match this offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Claim as of Q1 2024 validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC, member SIPC, is a registered broker-dealer.
Thank you so much for making this episode of Locked On ACC your first listen and your first watch today. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? You have to turn down the volume with all the shouting. Make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news, streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Now, uh, despite uh, Florida State fans yelling at us earlier this week, uh, Kenton and I do not believe Florida State is going to be in the ACC much longer, but we do believe they will still be in the ACC this coming season and beyond this doomsday date of June 30th that people are putting out there. Uh, and, and the ACC got a W in court today. Uh, a Mecklenburg County judge uh, that's in North Carolina on Thursday denied two motions by Florida State to dismiss or stay a lawsuit filed by the ACC that the league hopes will force the school to honor its grant of rights agreement and pay the conference more than $500 million if it hopes to exit another uh, to another conference before 2036. The ruling by Judge Louis A. Bledsoe is seen as a significant win for the ACC as it would likely mean the battle between the league and Florida State would proceed in North Carolina rather than Florida, where FSU filed its own lawsuit against the conference. Uh, the ACC, this, by the way, this report is from ESPN. The ACC filed its lawsuit in Charlotte on December 21st in anticipation of a lawsuit by Florida State in Florida, which came after approval by the school's board of trustees uh, the following day. Florida State's lawsuit seeks to extricate the university from the ACC's grant of rights, a contract that gives the conference ownership of FSU's television media rights through 2036. The ACC's suit seeks to uphold the grant of rights. They say Florida law typically offers preference to the entity that files the first lawsuit, which in this case is the ACC. And so Florida State, they still have their uh, their suit uh, in Florida, Kenton. But today's today's a victory for the ACC because if the jurisdiction remains in North Carolina, that obviously would favor the ACC more than Florida State. But the, the war is not over, but a battle was won today by the ACC. Again, you know, I know that uh, everybody, like you said, people like to yell at us when they think we're wrong. And I'm okay with that. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. Again, Donald and I have been around the block a little bit. We're we're two bald guys talking ball here. We we know we've seen enough in terms of these legal battles. We've seen enough in terms of what's going on with these conferences. We we have seen enough to know that again. I I get it, right? I get it, right? Superno fifty eight told you all this thing is over. It's done. We're gone. Tiger Man 42 said, hey, we're out of here by no later than May 3rd. I get it. <laughs> I understand, right? And and I'm sure Tiger Man uh, 42 said it under good authority. I get it. But the reality is simple. These things, again, our schools, our universities do not have plot armor. They have to go through the legal process just like everybody else. Right, right. Kevin Feige is not directing this lawsuit. This is everybody is having to deal with the real world and real consequences for every action that's been taken here. OK, that's just the reality. And so this loss in court for Florida State is not the end of it. Like you no. said, it's a battle, not the war. However, this battle virtually guarantees that this war will drag on past that June 30th date. Yeah, so so the the ACC want wants to uh, to make it established that if Florida State wants to leave, they have to buy out the full grant of rights, right? Florida State yeah. wants to leave without paying a dime. I, I think this is going to head to a settlement. Uh, mm -hmm. It's going to be somewhere between zero dollars and five hundred million plus. I think this is going to be settled eventually. Uh, I just don't think it's going to be set settled that quickly. But as far as like again, I want to emphasize that uh, I don't want anyone to think that we're saying hey. It's over Florida State's, you know, they're, they're stuck no, in a conference they want to be in forever uh, because no. uh, I want to I want to read this uh, this ex post from Rohan Law, who's an attorney who's been following these proceedings very closely because uh, every time they have a court date, I see Rohan Law just blowing up my timeline. He's all over the stuff. He says FSU wins one point in the North Carolina suit against the ACC. Judge Bledsoe concludes that even if all the facts alleged were correct by the ACC, they could not possibly meet their burden to show that Florida State owed any 
fiduciary duty to the conference. This claim of breach is dismissed with prejudice, meaning the ACC can't come back and tweak those allegations. He doesn't want to hear, the judge doesn't want to hear anything more uh, about the matter. So it wasn't, uh, I guess the the findings were not a complete loss uh, for Florida State today. And, and something that Rohan Law and other tweets has been emphasizing is that in this case of a motion to dismiss, th there wasn't a discovery process for this. So he he has to just the judge has to assume on the surface that the that the claims and allegations uh, being stated by by the ACC are truthful, but they haven't actually done the digging to to verify whether those are or not. But you know, Florida State's motions were were denied today, and then I, I have to wonder uh, how much because you, you got to know that the Clemson has got to be sitting back to see how this stuff with Florida State plays out because their their lawsuit is very similar. Yeah, I mean uh, the reality of this thing is. There are many parts of this, okay? And there will be parts of this thing where you see the ACC gain some ground, they'll lose some ground. You'll see Florida State and Clemson gain some ground and lose some ground and all that good stuff. The reality is Americans, or let me not say Americans, humans in general, we don't care much for the labor pains. We want to see the baby. Yeah. That is what it, this situation is all about. With all due respect to Rohan Law, with all due respect to ESPN, with all due respect to everybody who is following this case, uh, Megan Kuniff, if she decides to get involved, because I know she's a super celebrity uh, the reporter and all that, I am telling you this from the most genuine standpoint I possibly can. I don't give a rat's behind about any one of the battles that are happening. What is the end result of the war? What's the end result? That's, you know, I, you and I have both agreed Florida State and Clemson won't be around in 2036 in ACC. That's not happening. No, yeah. They're not going to be here till the end of the Grand Rise. That's just not happening. But what we do agree on is they will be here at least for the 2025 and possibly 2026 seasons. You know, with, with ESPN saying that they have the rights to, um, you know, renew the deal or not, and Florida State and Clemson being a big part of that and all that, and I'm seeing all these folks say, you think that Clemson and Florida State would leave without a firm landing spot, without already knowing, without already having discussions? Well, maybe they know the Super League is going to be open. So what does it mean? Again, that's illegal, friends. <laughs> if you know that, if you 100% know that, don't tell anybody else because you're telling people you know of a crime being committed. It's right. illegal for these teams to go to another conference while they're still with the ACC. Stop telling people about crime. Shh. <laughs> In the words of one Dwayne Carter, real G's move in silence like lasagna. Please be like lasagna, friends. Move in silence. Uh, so with that being said, you know, these the court cases are moving along. It's interesting to see. But again, everybody imagines these things like the docudrama of the OJ trial. But in reality, the OJ trial was long and boring and didn't include fantastical moments every single day. They're just word days that there were fantastical things happening. That's not to lessen the impact of that or lessen the loss of life that happened there. That is with all due respect to all parties involved there. I'm just using that one as an example of there were many docudramas made about it that made it seem like every day was exciting. When in reality, if you were around for that, it wasn't. That's not what it was. And this is the same thing. We're not going to see exciting stuff every day. We're not going to see, oh, new finding. They're done. They're gone. It's, it's just not going to work like well, when we come back, uh, we have to talk about who's we knew NC State are the darlings of, of this final four, probably on both sides, men's and women's. But certainly on the men's side, they're seen as the David going up against a, a Goliath and then a bigger Goliath is going to be there in the finals, assuming UConn moves on. But, you know, not only are they the sentimental favorite, people are putting their money behind this as well. We'll talk about that and more. You want to keep it locked right here to Locked on ACC. Folks, when you're looking for tickets to your next big sporting event or your next big concert, you're looking for the best possible deals, especially at the last minute. And guys, I got news for you. Game time has done right by me so many times. I have found day of tickets to Miami Heat games, Florida Panthers games. Uh, you know, my, my wife and my mom went to see Hamilton down here in South Florida a couple weeks ago. They got great deals on tickets. Like, you will be amazed. You used to think maybe that, hey, last minute tickets, I'm not going to get the best prices. You're going to at game time. I use this app weekly. So, guys, uh, 
you get these priority last minute deals. Save up to 60% off buying last minute for sports, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. The flash deals. You save even more with exclusive in-app deals on select seats ahead of the game or the event. One of my favorite things about game time is the all-in pricing. On the game time app, they're not going to slap those hidden fees at checkout. You're going to see right away exactly what you're paying for those seats. And the lowest price guarantee, or the game time guarantee as we call it, means if you find tickets in the same section or row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. So lo- take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use code Locked on college for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked on college for $20 off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Thank you so much for making this Friday episode of Locked on ACC your first listen and your first watch today. We're free wherever you get your podcasts. We're free on YouTube, part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day uh nc state i know i know it's kenton's team but right now nc state have become america's team and it's not just the sentimental stuff kenton uh nc state uh so out of all the action on the purdue nc state point spread this was a study done by bet mgm 76 percent of the bets and 74 percent of the money is going in on the wolf pack and, and that the second note of that is important kenton because sometimes you know 76 percent of the bets but those are people betting two dollars five dollars 70 74 percent of the money is coming in also on nc state and listen uh, i know that there are a number of reasons for that they are the ultimate cinderella story this year you know dj burns has has captivated america but the other part of it is i, I think a lot of people feel the same way that i do Nine and a half plus nine and a half, they are too big of an underdog. And I'm wondering if enough money is going to come in on NC State that by the time that game tips off, I wonder if it's going to be eight and a half, nine points instead of nine and a half. Well, you know, Dono, according to the Purdue fans who have watched our show recently, uh, we were wildly disrespectful to Purdue. Not only do they have Purdue fans. Well, well, uh, they exist. They exist, and they were in the comments. And not only do they have the Player of the Year in Zach Eady, but apparently every player on that team, when they shoot it, they have no doubt. They have no doubt. Number one three point shooting team in America. Doc. I think number two, and technically number two in America. Yeah. Well, well, don't tell them that because everybody told me number one. So we'll let them live in that number one bubble, and they never have bad shooting games either. So I don't know why people are putting their money on lowly old NC State. You know, this is, I mean, hey, last time we saw something along these lines, uh, it it was probably uh, some some guy named uh, Hakeem Olajuwon and and Hakeem and uh, uh, Clyde Drexler and 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 some kid off the bench named Benny Anders that they were all like excited about. They named a fraternity uh, about him or something like that. Phi. I slam a dunker or something I along those lines. Gemma. Yeah, that was no, there's no way that you can beat them. But again, you know, there's sometimes when there, you feel it, you feel that thing. And you know, when you're in that moment where you're like, this is different. This is different. There is something at work. There is something beyond what you can capture via numbers at play. And you feel that with this team because you talk about one of the biggest things I talk about with NC State and why they've been so successful. There's been no pressure. On them. There's still no yeah, pressure. On them. Right. There's still no pressure. Everybody's telling me in the comments, you all are lucky that the spread is only eight and a half or nine and a half. I said, no, put, let that spread get beyond 12 well, and, points. And I promise is, you. How, I'll put my house on. Like, like, how did Purdue fans get so cocky? Like, I know getting into the final four, it, it's an accomplishment, but, mm-hmm. you know, they have in, in recent tournaments, they've lost to 13 seeds, 15, and 16 seeds. And that's in the past three tournaments. They got an 11 coming up on Saturday. So we'll see how that goes. Well, you know, Dono, this team is different. Like I just told you, they don't miss any shots. And right. Zach Eady is apparently just chopped liver. He's just along for the ride for these imma- immaculate <laughs> it's, it's all about the other guys. They're they're immaculate. Again, <laughs> 3 of 15 did not happen last game. Ugh. 11 of 30 from the field did not happen. We must pay attention to the full season and not what have you done for me lately. Andre 3000 was lying when he said you only funky as your last cut. No, your first cut is what matters the most, especially in March, as we have seen. So, you know, 
I'm not worried, but apparently America says you should be, Purdue. America says you should be. Mm. And la- as, a, as a Detroiter myself, when America feels like the Rust Belt should be worried, we should be. It's not going to go well for us. It's generally not going to end well. I promise. But in all seriousness, this is, you know, you talk about the smart money, but let's also talk about the long money. They have the longest odds out of anyone. That's the most bang for your buck. That's the most value for your buck. If you believe in that team to go forward and do something. So it's not a huge surprise. And last thing before I pass it back to you, NC State's men and women are the first ever teams, both men and women to reach the final four. And both teams are eight point or more underdogs. The women's wow. team, I believe they're 12 or yes. so point underdogs. I saw that today, yeah. And you want to talk about David and Goliath. One of these teams is undefeated, and it's not Purdue. One of the teams that, that NC State got to play is we get undefeated. That team can actually say nobody has the recipe to beat us. That team, that South Carolina team with Don Staley. You know, just yeah. saying. But in all seriousness, this would be, again, both teams are hoping to be David, and they're hoping that Isaiah James and DJ Burns and, and company – are the greatest slingshot the world has ever known to take out two absolutely behemoth Goliaths. Well, I I got nothing further to add because it was well said. And guys, make sure, I I know Kenton and and Grayson have been covering all of this all week long at Locked on Wolfpack, so make sure you check that out as well. Uh, You know, Miami's basketball team didn't make it this far, safe to say, but I've been covering spring football and having a lot of fun with it, so check out Locked on Canes, check out Locked on Wolfpack, and we will talk to you guys Monday. And hopefully, you know, we're talking about uh, NC State in the the final game. I don't want to jinx it, but we'll talk about that Monday on another episode of Locked On ACC, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.